Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Roger State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Matt Meyer, Executive Director of the River Parks Authority, and Tanya Kerrig, who is the Manager of Community Relations. Matt and Tanya have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you both for joining us today. Thank Thanks you, Mark. So. Glad to be here. Thanks so much. So, Matt, Tanya, tell us a little bit about the organization. Let's start off with you, Matt, about the scope of the organization, the people you serve, your budget, and how you improve the lives of people living and visiting Tulsa. The River Parks Authority is a standalone agency. <clears throat> a lot of people think we're a city department, but we're actually a Title 60 public trust. We're ha half county and half city. So we go through both the budget process for the county and for the city. And we have about 26 miles of trail along the Arkansas River in Tulsa. We have several main facilities. <clears throat> we have the West Bank Soccer Complex. We have the Festival Park where most of Tanya's events take place. If we count every everybody, we have about 1.4 million visitors or customers uh, per year. And in terms of the work that you do, in terms of connecting the community, Tanya, to the organization and its facilities, how does that unfold on an annual basis? We uh, provide as many communications and opportunities as possible for, um, for people to visit the park, uh, for formal activities, including you know, races and runs and festivals, um, organized activities, or um, just opportunities to come out and enjoy the park to do whatever they might have interest in, inclu including disc golf or picnics, or um, to look at the various features that we have in the park, like um, art pieces. So um, my job is to make sure that the public is aware of all of the wonderful things that they can do at River Parks. How do you organize your staff so that you can meet all these various uh, needs. You have horticulturalists, you've got uh, people who are facilities managers. How does that function? Well, we only have 12 staff full time. So we do a lot of things by uh, contract in terms of our maintenance, our right. mowing and tree trimming. Probably 90% of that is done by contract. We schedule things, you know, we're schedule runs and races like Tanya mentioned, but festivals are really what we're known for in the way of events and that's what Tanya sort of specializes in. What kind of festivals <coughs> do you have on an annual basis? Well, we are fortunate to be um, the entity that produces the annual Independence Day, July 4th celebration for the city. So that's, a, that's our most heavily, or the largest attended events that we um, produce each year. So that's fireworks, and I mean, it's really getting, getting into some areas that aren't, they're definitely not everyday occurrences in the park. So that's one of the major events we do. And then we try to bring events to the park that are really produced by third party companies and then we facilitate make sure that the grounds look wonderful for them and then they come um, and rent the venue and produce their events so those partnerships are very important to us as well and then Lindy Oktoberfest also I have to I have to, <laughs> have to. That's like one of the best Oktoberfest in the galaxy and tell and say something about that we just Certainly, yeah. certainly. Well, that is a, um, a, a contract arrangement with, an, with another nonprofit organization, Tulsa Oktoberfest Incorporated. And uh, for the last uh, eight years, uh, River Parks has managed and produced that event for that organization. And it's become one of the top Oktoberfests in the nation. So, and that's produced entirely with private funds and with volunteer hands. And, uh, and with contract workers. So that's been a wonderful, wonderful addition to the park. And it is one of the most well-known features of River Parks. Mm -hmm. And how many people attend the Oktoberfest and the Independence Day uh, celebrations, which I guess are, are your biggest events annually? Those, those would be the largest. Now we've been told we can only make estimates on uh, Independence Day because you can see our fireworks for miles um, from the point where we shoot off the fireworks. So what do we say there? 80,000 plus? 60 to 80,000. Yeah. I mean, it's not a gated ticketed event mm -hmm. like Oktoberfest. People mm -hmm. can watch it from wherever. Mm -hmm. so. All right, right. And how many people attend the Oktoberfest event? Boy, that's a big one as well. Um, that's a gated event in about 17 acres worth of property over the course of five days. So, you know, we'll have anywhere from 10 to 15,000 people a day. And then you're also coordinating with a whole range of different people. Every time you have a mm -hmm. gathering of people, you have a whole myriad of, of uh, concerns for those people and for their safety and also you have you have preparation and then clean up at the end. Well that's right and so every project every endeavor has uh, elements to uh, really their own small business you know business projects and 
So, you know, you look at River Parks as a whole, as a business, and we're doing, you know, maintenance and everyday you know, operations processes, um, and that's the big, the big part of things. Mm -hmm. And then those smaller events and organization, or organizations that we work with, of course, they, um, they bring all those elements with them as well. Yeah. You mentioned Freedom Fest. I mean, it costs $130,000 to $140,000 a year for that. It's a one-day event. And only forty thousand or so is fireworks. Mm. Everything else is you got to pay cops holiday right. time, and you got street closings and barricades and entertainment and traffic porta potties and, and cleanup <laughs> and all that. So it all mm. adds up. So we we do that through sponsorships. And Quick Trip has been our presenting sponsor for the last several years, and that takes a lot of other supporting sponsors to make it work as well. How do you how do you create competencies in this very uh, slim staff of of twelve? Uh, so that you are ensuring that you're doing your, the, compact, uh, the, the contract compliance piece, you're, you're doing the community outreach. What does your team look like? Most of our staff has some history of what works mm -hmm. and what doesn't work, so that's a good thing. Uh, in terms of maintenance, like our contracts, we rebid them every three or four years, so we have that. that uh, you know, we do everything in partnership, almost. I mean, the bigger, our parent organizations, the city and county, we lean on them for expertise for certain mm -hmm. things at times. We use consultants, like uh, we use enge engineering consultants and landscape architect consultants as well. So, and we have a really good reputation around town. I mean, I can't take credit for that. We've just, we, we've had it and uh, everybody loves River Parks. I've been here 16 years and I haven't found anybody that doesn't like River Parks. Can't take credit for that, but I think it's just, uh, you know, we're, we do a lot of things right and we're popular. And it's an economic <laughs> asset because it's improving the quality of life in Tulsa. You also have whole economies, the runners, yeah. the bikers, um, the, the, uh, the restaurants, the, uh, these events. Mm -hmm. uh, each of these events is, is a way to, first of all, create community, but also a way to, uh, to boost the economy as people experience these events and experience the park. It's all part and parcel of, of creating a vital Tulsa. Well, the, the Lindy Oktoberfest Tulsa, I mm -hmm. mean, just the sales tax from that, I signed a bunch of checks the other day, like mm -hmm. a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of sales tax mm -hmm. from that one event. So that is an economic impact, as well as all the vendors that benefit from it too. A lot of networking and developing the relationships with uh, retailers, with event producers, and um, it just, it, we all benefit each other. For people who don't know Tulsa, don't know the lay of the land, talk a little bit more about the different uh, ecosystems, the different areas of the parks, and how you actually see that and the different facilities. Well, speaking of ecosystem, tells me to reminds me to uh, mention Turkey Mountain. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you a little bit of background, if you'll allow me. Um, River Parks owned about 200 and some acres of the Turkey Mountain Wilderness Area. The city owned about 200 acres, 197 to be exact, and the George Kaiser Family Foundation owned over 200. We were in the process of negotiating our leases with the city. So as part of that discussion, the Kaiser Foundation said to the city of Tulsa, hey, you know, if you will deed your land to the River Parks Authority, we also will deed our land to the River Parks Authority, and by the way, we're going to fund a master plan. And they did, and they did. And so we had Michael Van Bockenberg and associates from New York City work with us, uh, engage the public. So we had this real gem uh, of a wilderness area where people can mountain bike and hike and watch the butterflies and watch the birds and just enjoy the outdoors right in, in the city limits and it's preserved. So we're excited about that. And it's a matter of preserving the quality of life and the unique character of Tulsa. But if we develop every square inch, we lose our character, we lose who we are. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're learning so much also about how these parks are part of our decompression cycle yeah. as human beings. We need to have that, we need to breathe some They're of the They're for our mental health, spiritual health, and physical health, so really. Well, not to mention <laughs> watershed, that too. Uh, atmosphere, biodiversity, mm -hmm. um, pollution control, uh, absorption <laughs> of carbon, all those different elements are all part and parcel of a park. Totally agree. <laughs> now you have uh, facilities also. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the physical facilities as well? Well, we have 26 miles of trail. So we have that. We have seven or eight park restrooms. We have several playgrounds throughout the park. Our park is really a long ribbon of green space along right. the river. And facilities wise, we also uh, work with teams, sports teams, mm -hmm. who they manage their own 
activities, but we have a rugby field mm -hmm. on the east side of the river. We have uh, the soccer complex that you mentioned on the, the west side, and then we have a, um, a brand new building facility built by our rowing club there mm -hmm. on the west side. So, And uh, disc golf too on both sides. Yep. Yeah. You have disc golf as well. Mm -hmm. We do. I didn't know about the disc golf. I didn't know about the rugby facility. It's, and you didn't know about rowing, probably. Either. Didn't know about rowing. Is, is there a big rowing community? Is there a big uh, rugby uh, community? I guess big is relative. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're right. pretty active. They're I mean, pretty active. ones that are there. We're also, you know, speaking of the river, there's two massive projects that are going to be coming up: a new pedestrian bridge across the river and a new mm -hmm. low water dam. So. That's a whole other topic. And that's part and parcel of, of binding people on both sides of the river together. It makes it a little bit more accessible to pedestrians and, and reduces uh, the whole need for traffic. It, it actually creates an experience. Oh, absolutely. Actually, from a number of different yeah. locations in the park, um, because you can access um, then from the park, uh, north, south, east, and west, we have a huge uh, cycling community mm -hmm. and then also running communities that are either accessing and entering the park from their neighborhoods or from downtown, um, or they're meeting in the park and taking off to various areas. So the connectivity, um, the access, um, it just makes a tremendous difference for the city. In terms of talking with different conservancies, I talked with the head of the Central Parks Conservancy. Certain uh, organizations are focusing on native species and trying to uh, ensure that the biodiversity uh, is is uh, safeguarded. Do you have those types of, of initiatives uh, here in the park where you're, where you're concerned about uh, ensuring that, that the different uh, fauna and, and uh, flora are, are uh, preserved or shaped in, in particular ways? I think we'll see most of that uh, in, in terms of river parks at the Turkey Mountain Urban mm -hmm. Wilderness Area. Mm -hmm. But you'll see a lot of native grasses, native plantings in gathering, gathering place. place. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. I mean, they don't mow the park at all. <laughs> so. It is a world-class park. It's a $460 million park, most of it which is privately donated, but they have the native plants, the native grasses, um, you know, the, the pond, Peggy's Pond, the water is, you know, recycled, recirculated, and it's, it's, they're very green, so. And it becomes an educational and, and experiential uh, platform for kids, for adults. Every, lots, yeah. every square inch of it, yeah. truly. So, M Matt Meyer, uh, Tanya Carrick, thank you so much for sharing the work of the River Parks Authority, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.